Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the result. On that question, there were 96 ayes, 0 nays, and 4 members absent. A majority of members voting in the affirmative. The chair declares the bill passed. The clerk will please report the title. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 495, providing correctional institutions and juvenile facilities video and audio records be confidential. Are there title amendments? Delegate Capito moves to amend the title. The question is on the adoption of the title amendment. Those in favor of adoption of the title amendment will please say aye. aye. As opposed to please say no. The I have chair declares the title amendment adopted. The title as amended by the House will be and remain the title of the bill. Gentleman from, from the 96th. Mr. Speaker, I move that the bill take effect from its passage. The question is on the motion that the bill take effect from passage. Those in favor of the motion will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the result on that question. There were 96 ayes, 0 nays, and 4 members absent. Two-thirds of members voting in the affirmative. The chair declares that bill effective from passage. The clerk will please communicate the action of the House to the Senate. Next bill on third reading. Senate Bill 508, clarifying reporting and disclosure requirements for grassroots lobbying expenditures. Are the objections to having the bill explained in lieu of having it read? If not, gentlemen from the 51st to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Currently, Article 3 of Chapter 6B of the West Virginia Code, it's the Governmental Ethics Act, requires individuals and entities who are not otherwise required to register as a lobbyist as elsewhere provided in Chapter 6B to register as a sponsor of a grassroots lobbying campaign when they spend more than $100 in one month or $500 over three months on activities addressed to the public that are intended, designed, or calculated to influence legislation and to disclose donors who give more than $25 to that campaign. This bill increases the monetary threshold, which then trigger registration and disclosure requirements. If enacted, individuals and entities will not be required to register as sponsors unless they expend more than $1,000 in a single month or more than $5,000 over a three-month period, and donors need not be disclosed unless they donate $1,000 or more to the individual or entity specifically for the purpose of furthering the grass grassroots lobbying campaign. That's a summary, Mr. Speaker, urge passage. The question before the House is, shall the bill pass? Is there a debate on the bill? <coughs> gentleman from the fifth, Doug Flew Hardy is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? Yes. So I'm trying to figure out exactly who we're identifying here. Did you say this goes towards activities that influence legislation? Yes. Okay. So we're increasing from $500 to 5000 for activities that influence legislation, and we're increasing from $200 to 1000 the one-month expenditure requirements for activities that influence legislation? In the, the latter, it's 500 to 5000 not 200 Looks like 500 to 5,000 for the three-month period, and 200 to 1,000 for the one-month period. Correct? That's correct. Okay. I'll well, thank you for yielding. Sure. Well, you know it's day 59, because year in and year out on day 59, what do we do? Increase dark money in the state of West Virginia. We love that dark money on day 59 when nobody's paying attention on a Friday night. That's what we do year in and year out with the supermajority. We increase the activities that influence legislation. We're saying, hey, lobbyists, come on down. Got some more money for you. Come on down. More money for you. I mean, this is the last thing we need is more money in politics, especially dark money. Go back home to your districts and have them rank the important things you want them to do for you and see if this shows up on it. Well, golly gee, I just think you should go to Charleston and increase some of that dark money. Why don't you go to Charleston and help those lobbyists out a little bit? I don't think there's enough of them. You ever seen that lobbying book? It is thick. Super thick. There's a lot, lot more of them than there are of us. And apparently we just love that dark money. I, I, I'm, I'm a hard no. I get tired every year, year in and year out. We come down here and we increase campaign finance contributions to us 
We just did that a couple years ago. We took it from 1,000 to 2,800, as if that's necessary. And now we're going to allow more dark money in politics. That polls at about 0%, more dark money in politics. Yet, you're going to vote for it. We won't. The Democrats won't. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from the 100th, like right now is recognized. The Vice Chairman yield for a question. Yes. On line uh, 17, it says the names and addresses of each person contributing $25, um, and it's lined out, and now is $1,000 or more be made for the purposes of furthering the campaign and the appreciative, the aggregate amount contributed. Can you tell me what the effect of that would be, please? That means that any any individual it, who it, contributes... It increases the dollar amount for the requirement. So it increases it by 40 times? As it's stated in the bill, okay. the minimum threshold. Okay. And that would be for any individual who's going to be contributing, any individual, not any corporation or anything like that? Uh, that is correct. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Mr. Speaker, speak to the bill. Gentleman's recognized. Uh, I have real trouble with uh, increasing an amount like that from $25 to $1,000. Uh, an a increase that might, you know, come reasonably close to inflation might make sense, but that's, that's a substantial increase. And as was mentioned earlier, the other increases within this bill bother me. I, I think we're, we're allowing money to uh, come into the campaigns uh, without being properly uh, vetted. And I, I'd like to see us work on this type of bill and uh, end up with a, a bill that might be more um, amenable to the people uh, and to make a little bit more sense from a, a financial perspective. So I, I will be opposing the bill. Thank you very much. Chairman of the 94th, Dr. Kump. Permission to speak on the board? Yes, gentleman is recognized. I cannot, with good conscience, vote for this bill. I'll be voting no. Gentleman from the 52nd, Dr. Rowe. Thank you. Would the gentleman answer a question or two? Yes. As I understand it, there's no report required for somebody to donate $999 every single month forever. I mean, it would be $12,000 a year, and there would be no report required. There is a three-month cap. Well, but, but if you give nine, $999 every month, you'll never hit that $5,000 cap. You just keep going and never report, as I read it. I believe that would expede, exceed the 500 in the three-month period. It's 5000 I think, in the three-month period. If I'm reading it correctly. Where are you? I'm on uh, to? page uh, one, line, and maybe I've got it wrong. Page one, line two. Five thousand for uh, over a three-month period, five thousand. But if you gave nine hundred ninety-nine dollars every month, there's no report required. So you could give a thousand dollars a year. I believe the gentleman is correct. I mean, I, 12000 in a year, or almost 12000 in a year you could give. And really, you could just give forever and never have it reported. I mean, you, you could give it for five years, 10 years. And as long as you kept it under the $1,000, you don't have to report, correct? I believe you are correct. OK, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there other debate on the bill? Does the gentleman wish to close debate on the bill? If not, the question is, shall the bill pass? Those in favor of passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? If so, the gentleman from the 91st, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the result. On this question, there are 35 ayes, 61 nays, four members absent, less than a majority in the affirmative. The chair declares the bill lost. Clerk will please report the next bill on third reading. For what purpose, I'll jump from 96, seek recognition. Mr. Speaker, I ask your name as consent for further consideration on committee substitute for Senate Bill 461 for title amendment. Gentlemen, I ask unanimous consent to return to further consideration of committee substitute for Senate Bill 461 for the purposes of a title amendment. Are there objections? There are no objections. Clerk will please report the title on committee substitute for Senate Bill 461. 
Committee substitute for Senate Bill 461 relating to West Virginia Public Employees Grievance Procedure. Are there title amendments? The Delegate Capito moves to amend the title. The question is on the adoption of the title amendment. Those in favor of adoption of the title amendment will please say aye. Those opposed will please say no. The ice have chair declares the title amendment adopted. The title of, the, of the, the title as amended by the House will be and remain the title of the bill. The clerk will please communicate the action of the House to the Senate on committee substitute for Senate Bill 461. Let's take now the next bill on third reading. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 516 relating to requirements for disclosure of donor contributions. With objections to having the bill explained in lieu of having it read. If not, gentlemen from the 51st to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The bill adds a new definition, membership organization political action committee in the state code section regulating elections to clarify the difference between a membership organization and a membership organization political action committee, the latter of which is the one which is organized for the primary purpose of influencing an election taking place in West Virginia. The Secretary of State has a current policy and related rules that distinguish between membership organizations that are focused on influencing elections and those that are not, but the new definition places that distinction expressly in the West Virginia Code. The bill also raises the minimum single donation amount that triggering the independent expend expenditure disclosure requirement from $250 to $1,000. Finally, it adds language clarifying that disclosure is limited to those donations made for the purpose of furthering electioneering communications. That is a summary, Mr. Speaker. The question before the House is, shall the bill pass? Is there debate on this bill? Gentleman from the 79th, I can Hanson's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the Vice Chair yield for a question? Yes. You mentioned there's an increase from $250 to $1,000. I believe that's on page 11. Is that right? Line yes. 20? Okay. What type of organization does that apply to? One second, please. That would apply to any organization. Would it be independent expenditures? Yes. Okay. And then that paragraph for the the change from two hundred fifty to a thousand dollars, it says between the first day of the preceding calendar year and the disclosure date. Can you explain what the disclosure date is? I'm trying to get a sense of how long of a time period that increase would apply to. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm sorry for the delay, but this would be like um, right now if it's $250 or less, um, you don't have to report the donor's employment status and, and things of that nature, um, whereas if it's over $250, $250 you do. This raise, changes that status from $250 to 1000 and I see in the bill that what's required to be reported is the name and address of the person who makes the contribution, and that that goes from 250 to 1,000. But it says more than 1,000 dollars between the first day of the preceding calendar year and the disclosure date. So I have a, I'm trying to get a sense of 
kind of something similar to what the delegate from Kanab brought up on the last bill. How many of these disclosures might occur over the course of a year? Well, you would, you would have, you have reports that you have to make on certain dates, and it's going to be disclosed within that time period, and so it, it has to be. So there might be more than one of these disclosures required in a year? I believe there could be. Okay. Thank you yes, for yielding. Um, if you didn't like the last bill, I would think you might not like this one as well. This increases the disclosure limit from $250 to $1,000. It quadruples it. It's, it's not tying it to inflation or anything like that. It's just basically saying you could contribute four times as much money to an independent expenditure committee and not have to disclose your identity. So I'd urge a no vote. Thank you. Gentleman from the 22nd, Dr. Lindvall is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the Vice Chairman uh, continue to yield? Yes. So for uh, independent expenditures uh, currently in state law, what is the threshold for uh, disclosing uh, this information? 250. It's 250, not yes. 1,000 currently for independent expenditures? Contributors or expenditures? For the expenditures. $1,000. $1,000. So would the bill uh, sync that up for these types of political action committees? Yes, it does. So it would be exactly the same? Exactly. Okay. That's all I've got um, on that piece of it. Thank you. So let's talk about what this bill actually does. Um, so first, this legislation clarifies what likely was a drafting error, uh, whereby previous state law included all membership organizations within the definition of a political action committee. Okay? All membership organizations of every kind. Clearly, all membership organizations are not political action committees, as many membership organizations do not engage in the political process at all. So that's thing number one. Additionally, the Secretary of State has a policy and related rules that distinguish between membership organizations that are focused on influencing elections and those that are not. The new definition would place that distinction expressly in the state code. That's what this bill does. Senate Bill 516 clarifies the error. It conforms state code to the existing practice with the Secretary of State's office by defining membership organization PACs. Okay? as a political action committee, and, and the same as, as the legislative rule currently does, ones that we've had to vote upon, they're legislative rules. Of note, all political action committees, including membership organization political action committees, if this bill is adopted, all political action committees uh, must file regular reports with the West Virginia Secretary of State and disclose any and all donations received by the political action committee. It also then further clarifies that those engaging in independent expenditures must disclose the name and address of any individuals contributing more than $1,000, which would be up from the current code of 250 bucks, but that is exactly to sync it up with all other independent expenditures. Simply clarifies. Third and finally, the bill uh, clarifies that those engaged in electioneering communications must disclose uh, the name and addresses of any contributors donating more than $1,000 specifically for the purpose of furthering the electioneering communications. That ensures that organizations must not inadvertently disclose the identity of donors who did not contribute to that organization for the purpose of electioneering. So this bill is simply a good government bill. It's simply a cleanup bill. It syncs up with what the current practice is. And believe me, somebody ought to, ought to reconsider. I didn't think I needed to speak on the, on the previous one, but I'm the lead sponsor on the, on the, uh, on, in the House version of the previous bill. And if someone would like to reconsider their vote on that, we'd be happy to do that. Mr. Speaker, I urge passage of this bill. Gentleman from the 76, Senator Garcia is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've all received mail pieces, from, from organizations like the Committee on Puppies, Kittens, and Dolly Parton. And then you find out this legislator, they're taking West Virginia to hell in a handbasket. That's what we're talking about with these types of independent expenditures. What the gentleman referred to as far as we're clarifying in code, it's already clarified in rule. It, it's really not a big deal, but what is a big deal and who this bill is trying to, I don't know who they're trying to protect, but if you're willing to go out and put some money into a mailer that's going out against anybody in this room, 
I think that we should have the right to know who that is. And therefore, I'm opposed to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there other debate on this bill? If not, does the gentleman wish to close debate on the bill? If not, those in favor of passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the result on this question. There were 73 ayes, 24 nays, and three members absent. Majority of members voting in the affirmative. The chair declares that bill passed. The clerk will please report the title. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 516 relating to requirements for disclosure of donor contributions. Are there title amendments? If not, the title as read by the clerk will be in and remain the title of the bill. The clerk will please communicate the action of the House and the Senate. Next bill on third reading. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 522 allocating percentage of county excise tax. Action of the House and the Senate. For what purpose does the gentleman of the 14th Nugget Fogg seek recognition? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask unanimous consent to return to the second order of business introductions. Are there objections to returning for introductions? Okay, no objections are heard, and the gentleman is recognized. Thank you. I'd like to introduce in the uh, online gallery my five-year-old niece who is watching, and her name is Audrey. If everybody would just give her a wave right now. Thank you. For what purpose does the gentleman of the 45th Duggan Brooks seek recognition? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, having voted on the prevailing side of Senate Bill 508, I move to reconsider. 508? Yes, sir. Okay, the gentleman voted no. That's correct. Okay, the gentleman voted no. Okay, the question is on reconsideration of the vote on passage on Senate Bill 508. This is a debatable question. Is there a debate on the motion? Gentleman from the 42nd, Douglas Steele. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, folks, I didn't join in the debate. I mean, sometimes, you know, we listen to stuff out here and we think, I know how that's going to go. Oh, I was wrong about that one. You know, but hey, we got two days to go. It's going to happen a couple more times. So this bill right here, the grassroots lobbying bill, what's really going on in this bill? What were we all getting upset about? It was all this dark money and things like this. Grassroots lobbying organizations are required to not campaign for a particular person. They have to get into issue advocacy. So who are we talking about there? Maybe you have a gun rights group that's advocating for a specific piece of firearms legislation. Maybe you have a homeschool mothers group that's advocating for, you know, House Bill 3408. I'm probably getting that wrong, but there was some bill like that that was roughly numbered that way that was in favor of homeschool parents. And what these folks will do is they'll make a Facebook post and the way the law is set up now, if they boost that and put money at it and it goes over $200 in one month, they have to go file something with the Secretary of State and get into all these reporting requirements when really it's just a group of homeschool moms that are, you know, trying to, trying to get some type of piece of legislation passed. This isn't dark money groups. So what does the bill really do? What the bill really does is right now the limits on those expenditures are $200 a month and then they have to report or $500 in a three month period then they have to report. The bill raises those limits to $1,000 in one month and $5,000 over a three month period. Now, who came up with that number? Well, that's the same number we gave to the dark money guys. So the dark money guys have, you know, those type of levels. If they're spending on a specific piece of legislation or if they're spending on a specific candidate, they have to report that spending if it goes above those numbers. So PACs, super PACs, things like that, they're working with higher limits than homeschool moms and, you know, gun rights activists and things like that that are just from your local community. A lot of us are members of some of these organizations, and you might wonder why the dues are only $25 a month. That's so they don't have to report that. Once it goes over $25 a month, they have to report it. So if you look at that, you know, that individual contribution limit gets raised from $25 to $1,000. And it's like, oh, my gosh, that's a, that's a ton of money. Well, what can any of these grassroots organizations do with $25? I mean, they could literally get the population of West Virginia that's above age 18, and they would, I just gave myself a hard math problem, I don't know, they'd get something like 15, 18 million dollars, something like that. 
you know, for people that had a job is all they, they, they could come up with. So we give ourselves higher contribution limits. We give ourselves $2,800 contribution limits per cycle. And homeschool moms get $25. It's kind of way out of whack. So I think there was, there was conversation on this bill. I think all of us are getting a lot thrown at us right now. I mean, I, I will grant you that. This bill had nothing to do with dark money people going after us, uh, you know, on the back end of a campaign. If that's what one of these groups was doing, if they were naming candidates, if they were identifying candidates in a, in a campaign, in an electioneering communication, they would have had to register as a PAC and a complaint could get filed with the Secretary of State's office and the Secretary of State could investigate that and, and bring about action on it. But by putting our grassroots organization groups on the same level as the independent expenditures, the super PACs and people like that, we all on both sides of the aisle have issues that can never really grow because there's no corporation behind it. I, everybody knows in here I, I support health freedom. Why do you think health freedom is never successful? They can't raise money. Their contribution limit's $25. You know, I mean, if they get into that. Homeschool moms. There's no corporation pouring money at homeschool moms. You know? So what this does is it gives the ability for those organizations to grow and have a voice that's as loud as the corporations, that's as loud as ours, and we all know how loud I am, and some of us are. This puts them, it gives them a seat at the table. Now, if they go over those numbers, they're going to report like everybody else. What this does is it gives them the same reporting requirements as those PACs, super PACs, and us. So with that, I would urge us to adopt the motion to reconsider and possibly revisit this for further discussion. Gentlemen from the 23rd, I got more else recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the puppy dogs and kittens comments from my beloved friend from the 42nd, uh, but I would move to table the motion. Gentlemen, the 23rd moves to lay the motion to reconsider on the table. This is not a debatable question. Those in favor of the gentleman's motion to lay the motion for reconsideration on the table, for what purpose does the gentleman 98, Doug Espinosa, seek recognition? Point of inquiry. Gentleman will state the inquiry. So just to be clear what we're voting on here, so the gentleman from the 23rd has moved to table this. If we want to be able to reconsider it, we would vote no on this motion. Is that correct, Mr. Speaker? Uh, the gentleman is correct. A mo the, the motion to table, if adopted, will place the motion to reconsider out of reach of the body for this time. Thank you. For what purpose does the gentleman of fifth like a flu hardy seek recognition? Mr. Speaker. State the inquiry. So a green vote here uh, would would put us back in the position we were about roughly 30 minutes ago on how we exactly voted, meaning that we would not be taking up uh, 508 for further consideration. If the motion to lay upon the table is adopted, then we will not the House will not proceed to further consideration of the bill at this time. Okay, that, that was yeah, that, that 6135 vote. Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. correct. Are all members clear about the question before the House? The question before the body is the motion to lay upon the table the motion to reconsider. Those in favor of the motion to lay upon the table will please say aye. Aye. Those opposed will please say no. No. Roll call is demanded. Is the demand sustained? Demand is sustained. The question is, shall the motion to lay on the table be adopted? Those in favor of adoption of the motion to lay on the table will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the result. On this question, there are 33 ayes, 63 nays, and four members absent. The motion to lay upon the table is lost. There is still further consideration now on the motion for reconsideration. This is a debatable question. Is there other debate on the motion for reconsideration? Gentleman from the 53rd, Delegate Pritt is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, would the gentleman from the 42nd yield? Yes. Okay, so just so I understand this, let's say that you've got somebody who wants to donate a small sum of like um, $50, or $75, they save up their money to, let's say, a pro-life organization or a pro-choice organization or... General, state the question. 
Before us is the is debate on whether to reconsider not the bill itself. I think our, our limitations well, on debate would be whether we should reconsider or not, not to the actual bill itself. And the gentleman bill. would normally be correct. There are four motions under the parliamentary rules which permit debate to enter into the merits of the question before uh, for the underlying question. Th those are the motions for postpone indefinitely, discharge a committee, reconsideration, and rescind. This is a motion for reconsideration which does permit debate upon the merits of the underlying question. So the, the gentleman, the general rule at the point of order is not well taken. The gentleman from the 53rd still has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, hang on, I got to write that down for <laughs> <laughs> some time in the future. That was awesome. <laughs> so let's say we have somebody who wanted to donate to a pro-life organization. Let's say fifty dollars, or um, or seventy-five dollars. Just they, they scrounge up the money. I don't know. Maybe a pro-Second Amendment organization. Now, as of right now, if they want, if they donate that amount. Their name and address and a bunch of contact information has to be publicly listed, right? Yes, if it's above $25, if, if I'm not mistaken, yes. So basically what's happening there is as the current law stands, if they want to donate more than $25, they lose their right to privacy. You are right. Okay. All right, thank you. Mr. Speaker, I, I would like to speak in favor of the of the reconsideration at this time. The gentleman is recognized to enter in the debate. So, I, I mean, I think this is a very, very important principle. Uh, we're not talking about a bunch of, you know, a bunch of fat cats. We're talking about small donors who are donating to grassroots organizations. These are the people that uh, want to give a little bit of the money they earn. They're likely middle class people, and they want, they might want to donate $50 to uh, a, 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 some sort of organization to go towards a cause that they find very, very important to them. And sometimes a lot of these people, they want to have the ability to give to these organizations and not have to deal with being harassed. And they might want to have to deal with um, a lot of the things that we see out there, a lot of the aggressive tactics that we see from some people out there. They don't want to have to deal with that. And as the, the law currently stands, they have to make a choice. Do they give to an organization or do they have to deal with repercussions from the mob? And I think that's what that re this really comes down to. People do have a right to privacy, in particular when they're a small-time donor. These are people that give to grassroots organizations. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with grassroots organizations, people that want to have an impact on legislation. What this bill is doing is it's essentially leveling the playing field so that the people who want to give small donations and they want to engage and they want to have an impact on public policy, they're putting on, put on a similar playing field to the people who can donate large sums of money, the so-called dark money. I, I think this is a, a, a good bill, and for these reasons, I would urge adoption of the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from the 5th, Dr. Fluhart is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you truly believe that this is just some mom and pop, golly gee, willikers type groups, then I have some oceanfront property to sell you in Ohio County. Give me a break. Just look at the numbers and how we're increasing from 500 to 5. These groups, 5,000 every three months, and we're going to say you don't have to report? You think that's just some small groups, golly gee, willikers? rainbows and unicorns here in the chamber 30 minutes later after we took the appropriate vote because we knew the facts we were voting on it we know this is about dark money we know this is about not reporting we know this is about five going from 500 to 5,000 give me a break 200 to a thousand for monthly expenditures unreported you're gonna go nearly 5,000 every three months unreported I mean this is about transparency it's about fairness it's about getting rid of the dark money and nonsense that goes on in our elections I mean if you reconsider this after 30 minutes after taking a principled vote, after we debated it because some people worked the room and then got up and gave some rosy speeches, give me a break. I mean, what are we doing? It's the Friday night special that I'm so tired of in this legislature, so tired of the Friday night special where we talk about more money in elections. Unbelievable. 30 minutes later, reconsider that, they'll be reconsidering you next election because, believe me, uh, there'll be plenty of $5,000 being spent every three months advocating against you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Gentleman from the 99th, Doug Clark. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I was one of those that uh, earlier voted no, but uh, to keep the same uh, theory that I was talking about earlier, I'm glad our MVP decided to call a timeout, huddle us together, and educate us on what this bill really does. So I will be voting yes on this one. The question is still on the gentleman's motion to reconsider the vote on passage of Senate Bill 508. Is there other debate on the gentleman's motion? If not, the question is, shall the vote on pass? Yes, gentleman 25th, I get hornbuckles recognized. 61 to 35. 61 to 35. The gentleman from the canal mentioned the word principle, just like the man from the fifth. What are you going to stand on? Are you really going to go back home and say that some other delegate whipped votes so that we could vote for dark money? The Friday night special. I hope you feel real proud. And MVP? The MVP is right there. Thank you. The question is still on the motion to reconsider. Is there other debate on the gentleman's motion to reconsider the vote on passage of Senate Bill 508? Does the gentleman wish to close debate on the motion? The gentleman does not wish to close debate on the motion, so debate is closed. The question is, shall the vote be reconsidered? Roll call vote is demanded. Is the demand sustained? Demand is sustained. The question is, shall the vote be reconsidered? Those in favor of adoption of the motion to reconsider will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the result. On this question, there are 53 ayes, 37 nays, 10 members absent. The majority of members voting in the affirmative chair declares the motion adopted. The question now before the House is, shall the bill pass? The question is, shall the bill pass? The bill is open for debate. The bill is open for debate. Upon reconsideration, the rules will be reset, so debate is open on the motion to reconsider. Chair will recognize the gentleman from the 54th, Doug Push. No, I'm sorry, not on the motion to reconsider, not on the motion to reconsider, on the bill. The question is, shall the bill pass? The gentleman from the 54th is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was listening to my friend uh, from Raleigh earlier try to re-explain to the body what this bill does and what it doesn't do and one word that kept jumping out to me was maybe uh, maybe it's a group of homeschool parents maybe it's gun owners I don't know maybe it's plaintiffs attorneys maybe it's somebody else what <laughs> what the bill does is trying to raise that maybe I'd like less maybe we'd like to know who it is not saying they can't do it just saying they have to report it they say it's not about dark money. It creates more dark money by raising the limit. It's dark money when it's not reported. That's the definition. It has nothing to do with speech. It's about reporting. It's simply letting people know who's behind it. You know, maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's uh, an MCO in Ohio that would like to uh, get in on our Medicaid action over here in West Virginia. Who knows? We don't know. That's why you keep the limit low. Vote no. Gentleman from the 20th, Doug Foster is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And something I believe in this chamber is if you, something that's really important is if you can't make your point in three minutes, you're probably not doing, not ever going to get there. So I just want to say I have no idea how I'm going to vote on this. I think I'm just going to vote however, whoever makes the point the fastest is how I'm going to vote on this. I think that's what I'm going to vote with. Question still is, shall the bill pass? Is there debate on the bill? Is there debate on the bill? The gentleman from the fifth, Dr. Fluharty is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be fast. Uh, you know my position. I will just say maybe we should recess after this vote so many of you can go take a shower because you're going to need one after changing your mind in 30 minutes because a room got whipped and you fell prey to some rosy speeches on dark money on dark money. I hope it hits the press, I hope it hits the interwebs, I hope it hits everything. That the West Virginia legislature voted down expanding dark money and then 30 minutes later changed their minds. <laughs> laughable. Absolutely laughable. 
And quite frankly, it's just sad. It's just sad because not many people are watching. So we come down here and try to do the work for them. This is, after all, called the people's house. But do you really care about the people? Or do you care more about the campaigns? I think we know, especially after this vote. Or maybe not have some situational principles, and have real principles, and vote it down again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there other debate on the bill? Gentleman from the 76, Dr. Garcia, is recognized. Will the gentleman from the 44th give for a question? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I w you were talking earlier about the Republican platform. I was just wondering about dark money in the Republican platform. What's the position there? You know, I looked all through it uh, last night and this morning. I did not see the term dark money in there. Okay. Good question. So, so it doesn't sound like that would be something you all would be for. Uh, although I will say it may have changed in the last 30 minutes, though, from the way this body's acting. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There are no members seeking recognition at this time. Is there a further debate on the bill? If not, the question is, shall the bill pass? Those in favor of passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the result on this question. There are 49 ayes, 41 nays, 10 members absent. Majority of members voting, voting in the affirmative. The chair declares the bill passed. The clerk will please report the title. Senate Bill 508, clarifying reporting and disclosure requirements for grassroots lobbying expenditures. Are there title amendments? Are there title amendments? If not, the title as read by the clerk will be in remain the title of the bill. The clerk will please communicate the action of the House or the Senate. The clerk will please report the next bill on third reading. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 527 allowing family members of military personnel access to discharge records. The question is, shall the bill pass? Is there, are there objections to having the bill explained in 